hospital, it was in March a few years ago. Um, I stepped out with a colleague of mine visiting from Australia. We walked to our local subway stop. Uh, we were en route to catch a flight out to Rochester, New York for some uh, meetings of a professional nature. We're both professional musicians. Uh, both being Australian, we were having a conversation on the, the platform. And as we uh, proceeded towards our destination, we observed some interesting things. First, that uh, as the train was stopped at Park Street, an announcement was made that it would be held, and we observed all these police lining both uh, sides of the uh, of both platforms in the station with sniffer dogs, and thought that was interesting. They, they let the train go. We got as far as um, South Station, and by the time we got round to uh, meet our flight at Terminal B, uh, it was like we suddenly walked into a movie that we'd been observing as the stars, because the uh, silver line was stopped. My colleague and I were hauled off, separated from each other and our luggage, and uh, essentially treated as if we'd done something really wrong. I finally got a word into one of the, the state troopers and said, look, we don't understand what's going on here. And he said, do you have any idea why you've been detained? And I said, absolutely none. His exact words were, you were overheard having conversations you are not supposed to be having. And I was feeling a little bit cocky being a newly minted dual Australian US citizen. And I said, oh, surely this is the United States, um, you know, uh, not Nazi Germany in 1933. I, I remember I was trying to demonstrate for my Australian colleague what a Boston accent sounded like. And I wonder if somebody on the station took umbrage at it and decided that they would just cause a little bit of trouble. But fairly soon, I think they recognised that, that you know, they'd made a mistake. Um, you know, the upshot of it was we missed our flight to Rochester, we didn't go, uh, we were out of pocket, we were inconvenienced, but it could have been a whole lot worse. I made a point of publicising this as much as I could. I called the Boston Globe, I called the ACLU, and, and friends and colleagues contacted me from all over the world actually and said, oh look how, how shocking, how terrible that you have all this publicity. And I said, look, I initiated this because I felt that it was incumbent on me to actually speak out. And if I don't speak out, uh, you know, I am actually capable of doing it, then what about those who don't have a voice and could easily have been enmeshed in this in a much more serious and perhaps even terminal way? But the worst thing about it was suddenly realising that despite all the trappings of citizenship and you know, so even being welcomed to this country as a person of special abilities, it shouldn't matter whether I have special abilities or not, but in fact underneath it all, um, you're absolutely vulnerable. You're absolutely at the mercy of the people who've got the, the guns and, and wield the power.